Morihei Ueshiba, the founder of Aikido, has had a major impact on the world of Japanese martial arts for his extraordinary technical skills and profound philosophy based on the peaceful resolution of conflict. Despite the founder's prominence, the details of his life and the development of Aikido are little known among practitioners of the art. Let us explore the fascinating journey that led to the birth of this cultural treasure of Japan that is practiced by hundreds of thousands of people the world over. Today Tanabe is a Japanese seaport town located on the southern coast of Wakayama Prefecture with a population of about 70,000. During the Meiji period, its inhabitants were primarily engaged in fishing, farming, and lumbering. Here, Morihei Ueshiba was born on December 14, 1883, as the fourth child and first son of Yoroku and Yuki Ueshiba. Morihei's father, Yoroku, was a prosperous landowner who was engaged in the fishing and lumber trades. He is reputed to have been a hot-tempered man of great physical strength with an interest in martial arts. Yoroku was also a prominent citizen of Tanabe and served on the Tanabe and Nishinotani village councils from 1892 to 1910. Morihei's mother was from the Itogawa family of Tanabe and was born in 1850. Yoroku and Yuki probably married in the late 1860s and their union produced a total of five children. Morihei had three older and one younger sisters. About 1890, Morihei's eldest sister Tame married a man from one of Tanabe's wealthiest families named Zenzo Inoue. The marriage of Zenzo and Tame cemented a bond between the Ueshibas and Inoues that would remain solid for several decades. The couple had a total of eight children, the fourth of whom was Yoichiro Inoue, who would later play an important role in the development of Aikido. Morihei proved a sickly but intelligent boy with a good memory and a talent for mathematics. His early education took place at a school attached to a local Buddhist temple. Morihei was taught reading, writing, and basic mathematics and displayed a keen interest in religious studies. Zenzo Inoue had set up a series of businesses in the Asakusa district of Tokyo in the 1880s with the assistance of his younger brother Koshiro. Koshiro amassed a great fortune during the time of the Sino-Japanese War, mainly due to high demand for textiles and other products he manufactured. At the age of 18, Morihei moved to Tokyo to work in Koshiro's stationery business in Asakusa. Morihei's decision to embark on a career as a merchant was no doubt made jointly with the Inoue family. Morihei remained in Tokyo working in the Inoue family business for about a year. He did not find the life of a merchant to his liking, but Morihei's stay in Tokyo was noteworthy for the fact that he began his formal martial arts training there. Morihei enrolled in the nearby Tenjin Shinyoryu Jiu-Jitsu School of Tokusaburo Tozawa, where he practiced for a few months in the evenings. However, he soon contracted beriberi, whereupon he returned to Tanabe to recuperate. After his return to his native Tanabe, Morihei regained his health and began to strengthen his body. He went through a period of soul-searching during which he attempted to find his direction in life. In 1903, Morihei married Hatsu Itogawa, 
a member of the same Itogawa family as his mother, Yuki. The union of Murihei and Hatsu would last some 66 years and produce four children. By 1903, the political situation in Japan had become tense as negotiations with Russia over the two countries' conflicting interests in Far East Asia, specifically Korea and Manchuria, were unsuccessful. A military buildup in Japan created a patriotic atmosphere in which many young men desired to demonstrate their manhood by entering the military in order to serve their country. Morihei was caught up in this patriotic fervor and enlisted in the 37th Infantry Regiment of Wakayama in December 1903. He apparently had difficulty being accepted into military service because he was slightly under the minimum height requirement. Morihei later related that he did all sorts of stretching and hanging exercises in an effort to gain the additional height needed to enlist. During his years of military service, Morihei managed to enroll in a Yagyuryu Jujutsu Dojo in Osaka and commenced training in this classical art. In addition to Jujutsu techniques, his practice may also have included some weapons training, although the exact curriculum of the school is unknown. Since Morihei was on active duty and spent part of his tour in Manchuria, it is not clear how long or to what degree he studied this art. Morihei did maintain ties with the Yagyuryu school and would occasionally train even after leaving the army and returning to Tanabe. Another activity became a part of Murihei's life beginning in 1911. Yoroku was always looking for ways to channel his son's interests in positive directions. An excellent opportunity arose when a young judo teacher by the name of Kyoichi Takagi happened to visit the Tanabe area. Yoroku took advantage of the occasion to persuade Takagi a sturdy lad of 17 at that time, to remain and teach his son. Morihei, Yoichiro, and various local youth joined in the judo training. The study of judo also complemented Morihei's earlier training in Yagyuryu Jujutsu. Around 1910, Morihei became interested in the effort to colonize the underdeveloped region of Hokkaido, having just come through a restless period in his life when he sought a career direction, Hokkaido offered an outlet for his considerable energy. Given the influence of Yoroku and Zenzo on key decisions earlier in Morihei's life and Zenzo's long-standing interest in Hokkaido, it is likely that Morihei was encouraged by his extended family to join the colonization effort. A group of some 80 residents from Tanabe eventually settled in northern Hokkaido where they built a small village that was called Shirataki. Zenzo, Tame, and several of their children moved to Shirataki after the initial settlement was established. Moreover, Morihei had his father's support in this venture since Yoroku and Yuki also relocated to Hokkaido. Yoichiro Inoue, about 11 years old at the time and a member of the Weishiba household, accompanied Morihei's parents and baby daughter Matsuko to Hokkaido. In 1915, while in the nearby town of Engaru on business, Morihei was introduced to a jiu-jitsu expert named Sokaku Takeda. Morihei was highly impressed by Sokaku's amazing skills and ended up putting his life on hold for nearly a month while he studied Daitoryu Jiu-Jitsu under Takeda. Morihei invited Sokaku to his home in Shirataki to live and teach Daitoryu. 
Sokaku later settled in Shirataki and built his own home there. Morihei spent the next several years in intensive training under Sokaku. It was this study of Daitoryu Jujutsu that would provide the technical basis for Morihei's later Aikido. Morihei was among the leaders of the new village of Shirataki. Following in his father's footsteps, he briefly entered politics, serving as local town councilman from June 1918 to April 1919. In December 1919, Morihei received a telegram from Tanabe informing him that his father Yoroku was seriously ill. Morihei hastily arranged his affairs and gave his home and its furnishings to Sokaku as he left Hokkaido never to return. On his way back to Tanabe while passing through Kyoto, Morihei happened across a fellow traveler on a train was a believer in a fast-growing religious sect called Omoto. This man spoke enthusiastically about the sect's leader, whose name was Onisaburo Deguchi, and who was based in nearby Ayabe. Clinging to the chance that Onisaburo might be able to cure his father, Morihei impetuously made a detour to Ayabe, where he spent about a week among the faithful of the Omoto. He met and became totally captivated by the charismatic Onisaburo, who prayed for his father's recovery. Morihei then continued his journey back to Tanabe, only to be greeted by the devastating news that his father had passed away a few days earlier. After going through a difficult psychological period due to the death of his father, Morihei decided to move his entire family to Ayabe to live among the believers of the Omoto community. Morihei soon became one of the inner circle of Onisaburo, and the Omoto leader encouraged him to pursue his martial arts training and began teaching. This led to the opening of the Ueshiba Juku, a small dojo in his home in 1920. His students consisted mainly of members of the Omoto sect and a number of naval officers from the nearby port of Maizuru. Morihei taught and practiced very intensively during this period, and in addition to further honing his considerable Daitoryu skills, he is also known to have engaged in spear training. In the spring of 1922, Sokaku Takeda joined Morihei in Ayabe, bringing with him his wife, a daughter, and his six-year-old son and later successor, Tokimune. Sokaku stayed in Morihei's home and instructed his students in the Ueshiba Juku. Takeda spent a total of six months in Ayabe and, before returning to Hokkaido, awarded Morihei a Daitoryu teaching certification called a Kyoju Dairi. Onisaburo appears not to have liked Sokaku. Sokaku, not being at all a religious person, reciprocated the feeling. However, the Omoto leader did present Sokaku with a sword and a hand-drawn painting as parting gifts. All indications are that the relationship between Sokaku and his most famous student, Morihei Ueshiba, was strained during the Ayabe period. In February of 1924, Morihei accompanied Onisaburo and two other confidants on a secret trip to Mongolia. Onisaburo's stated intent was to bring about a great national movement in this underdeveloped nation with the power of a new religion. His plan was to build a utopian nation based on spiritual unity, which would provide a foundation for the stability of Eastern Asia and world peace. Unfortunately, Onisaburo and his party became embroiled in regional politics and were eventually arrested and imprisoned while awaiting execution. 
They were saved at the last moment through the intervention of the Japanese consulate, as the Chinese authorities feared provoking an international incident by executing such well-known Japanese. Onisaburo, Morihe, and their party had faced what appeared to be a certain death and miraculously survived. This incident had a powerful effect on Morihei and deepened his spiritual faith.